Do you want to feel happier? Do you want to feel more radiant and more alive? Or to go beyond alive and truly feel like you are thriving? That's what I'm here for. Helping you find that best you that you know is in there. It is. And you can start accessing that you today. It's possible. If you're ready for a shortcut to just that, let's work together. Reach out and let's work one-on-one -on -one to transform you and your life into happy, into thriving. Reach out to me and book a quick call. It's in the show notes and let's get you there. Are you really committed and ready? Then let's do it. Personally, I'm the happiest I've ever been thanks to all the practices that I've made a part of my life. You can be too. It is here for you. I promise. You can also access my course, The Youthfulness Hack, which is all about feeling good and getting radiant and all the things I do concentrated in one spot. Go there today and use code AMY15 for 15% off right now, only for listeners of this show. And if you are truly ready to have accountability and live happy, book a call with me today. The world needs your best. You deserve your best. Hello. That's right. Get loose. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Amy Edwards Show. I'm your host, Amy Edwards. So happy you're here. Uh, and here we go. We're going to talk about the Enneagram today with an expert. And I'm just so stoked that you're here. Thank you so much for turning up to these shows. You, you know how I just am effusively grateful at the beginning of these because I'm just so excited that we're here to keep up leveling, keep working on making life the best that it can be all the time. And that's what we're going to talk about today too. So thank you for being here. Uh, I'm trying to think if I have any more business up top. I really don't. If you haven't signed up for my newsletters though, I would love to connect with you there because we can always, you can always email me back to in those newsletters, which I love. So sign up if you haven't. It's at amyedwards.info or amyedwards.com. And I think that's it. I'm ready to get into the show today and welcome our guest, Caroline King. Hello, Caroline. Hello, Amy. Oh, everyone, Caroline is an Enneagram coach and stand-up comedian and host of the Random Acts of Caroline podcast and a friend. And I'm so excited that we're finally sitting down to talk Enneagram because it's been such a big part of your life. So thank you. Of course. Thank you. This I know. is so fun. It's so fun. I love you so much. And Same. you're just such a light in the world. And I'm so excited. And your husband now husband yeah it was a guest on this show too so if anybody i just want to bring that up up top too if anybody wants to check that out it's such a good episode it really is it's I, so it's one of my favorite interviews i've seen him do really yeah for sure oh my god that works yeah. my heart yeah. it's sky king so i'll put a link in the show notes but um we talked a lot about podcasting too and I, I just i found it really inspiring as a podcaster too and if anybody's listening and wants to start a podcast like you've recently started yours i would just say listen to that because it it he points out that people say the market's all saturated, but it's it's not, and what a growing medium it is, and I just love that so much. So, yeah, yeah, it's a great way to build your own seat at the table or build your own table, <laughs> really. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, build your own damn table. Yeah. That's right. I, I did that. Like, when I started dating and stuff, I was like, I bring so much to the table, and then finally I was like, I need to get out of that mindset. Like, what is this table I'm even talking about? Mm -hmm. Like, maybe there is no table. Maybe yeah. I'm going to build my own table. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Whose table? Table is this? Yeah, you're not <laughs> seeking somebody else's approval or invitation. That's right. Yeah. Build your own table. Mm -hmm. So speaking of, you have, and you are combining stand-up comedy. I love that you're doing this. <laughs> and Enneagram, we're going to delve into Enneagram today, but I know that those two are going together for you now too in your podcast that is like fresh on the podcast scene as well. So I guess let's just start Tell everybody what the Enneagram is, including me, because I forget. Yeah. Like, I get overwhelmed with information sometimes. And, you know, I get mixed up like, oh, what's my human design number? What's my Enneagram number? You know, so yeah, go ahead and just lay out your view of Enneagram. Please. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. by the way, I love like I love human design. I love I love a lot of different personality typing tools. But this one has just made such a difference in my life. So basically the Enneagram is known as the Enneagram of personality. Mm -hmm. So it's a personality typing tool that has um, nine different types. They're numbered one through nine. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of understanding your ego because our ego developed over, you know, thousands and thousands of years to help us survive. And so it is a way to understand the ego so that you can understand its tricks and understand the narratives that it's telling you 
and really like escape the box. Like a lot of people say, oh, I don't like personality tools because it puts me in a box. I don't want to be in a box. But really the Enneagram helps you understand the box that you're currently in and gives you tools to transcend that box. So you're not so controlled by the ego because the ego, it wants to protect you kind of, but it wants to protect itself. Right, right. So if the ego says, oh, it's time to lash out, that's just throwing you under the bus. Like it soothes <laughs> the ego, but mm-hmm. it doesn't help you and it certainly doesn't help other people. So um, lashing out isn't necessarily a, um, a trait of each Enneagram type, but it is for some. And so knowing, you know, the things that you need to tame, the bad habits you need to release yourself from, the good habits to develop, like all of that, it's really helpful for understanding yourself and understanding your path to growth because okay. we're all different you know yeah so okay so coming from an ego perspective then mm-hmm. can you just give like a quick little briefing on the different types and like how they relate to ego and yeah. can you just actually before we do that you've been studying this for how long and since you're 2018 co- since 2018 so yeah. five years yeah that's crazy dang <laughs> yeah that's good and yeah. so uh, you're like do you have a title like is it Enneagram coach or yeah Enneagram coach yeah I do one-on-one coaching and relationship coaching so it's not relationship therapy but um it's like understanding like how to work together yeah like like that's why you were wondering what Justin is and like how we work together yeah Yeah, I'm sure different type pairings have you know different strengths and blind spots so uh in so much ego that we're coming from in a relationship that is there to like to overcome at least for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's go through then the types and I haven't thought of them in, in relation to ego. And mm-hmm. so that's really interesting to me. I think that that's such a useful perspective of it. So what for would sure. that be? Yeah. So each types, um, like your type, first of all, you have it for your whole life. It's not like you started as one and then you go to a different one. Really? You can't change. You can't evolve. No. Okay. It's like birth to death. That's what you are. You know? Okay. But there's a bit of each type in us, but we usually say like I lead, like I usually just say I am a three. Mm -hmm. That's not wrong, but a lot of people are more technical about it and say I lead with three or I lead with whatever. Okay. So, um, so yeah, it's based on your motivation not your behavior. Okay. So mistyping can be common because we're thinking, oh, well, I do this. That seems like this number. But types can look similar, but it's based on your motivation. So it's like deeper than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So everybody, I'm a, uh, I lead from seven. I'm a seven. Yeah. So, and you're three. I'm a okay. Three. Yeah. So let's, let's talk. talk so, okay. Let's are. just do one through nine. Yes. Okay, yes. cool. Okay. So this is a very brief summary. Very each. brief coming <laughs> from ego. Like, yeah. That's what I want to know. Okay. So the type one. Unless there's anything else you want to throw in. Okay. No, okay. for sure. Okay. I'm going to challenge myself to not put it to it. Okay. Okay. Good. So type one, their motivation is to be good or like right or correct or polite. So Type ones tend to be our like stereotypical type A people. Perfectionist types. Yeah. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So they want to be like, they can have like black and white thinking, like this is good. This is bad. And they mm-hmm. always want to be on the good. So um, they can be a little bit rigid. You know, our superpower can often become our downfall too. Mm-hmm. So that perfectionism makes them very good at things and very, you know, organized. Yeah. But it can also, you know, make them feel a lot of anger and they can just like look at the world and see the imperfections in society in themselves their voice is very constant and very corrective oh figures their number would be one yeah right <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of perfect yeah okay so then type two twos are the helpers and so they are constantly putting other people above themselves mm-hmm. and so again superpower but their downfall is sometimes they're pouring from an empty cup and um they have a really good intuitive sense of knowing what somebody else needs or what some group needs and fulfilling that like almost immediately. So like a codependent type thing? Leading? Yes. Okay. That can definitely become like, that's the downfall of the two really, or the, the struggle of the two is okay. codependency and um, not taking care of the self, getting out of touch with what they want me yeah. feel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Three, you. Three is the best. No, just kidding. <laughs> Honestly, though, that is something that threes <laughs> often do. <laughs> you were just exemplifying your type. Yep. Okay, got yep. it. So threes are known as the achievers, um, also known as kind of the chameleons. Mm-hmm. So we have an intuitive ability to know what someone or some group sees as successful, mm-hmm. and we can shape shift into that. So threes are 
really, really good at setting and achieving goals, but sometimes they can get out of touch with what they want and who they truly are. And so threes, while we're very effective, like we're very focused on effectiveness, Mm -hmm. um, we can get out of touch with who we are. We can, you know, be people pleasing like, oh, you want me to be funny. Cool. I'll be funny. You want me to be dark. Cool. I'll be dark. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that is, I mean, we'll probably talk about this later, but that's one reason why I started stand up comedy to figure out my own authentic voice. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I definitely want to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Especially because of like, you're just platform of voice, your voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I want to talk about that. Cause it's so brave. Like that scares <laughs> me to death. Oh, it scares me to death. Too. I know. Have you been on kill Tony yet? No, are, I'm going to put your name. In? Oh, you got to put your name in sometime. Yeah. yeah I'm going to take it seriously. I'm not, you know, good. Take it seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I saw somebody who only semi took it seriously and it was like, oh, God, nothing. Worse oh, weren't we together? Pr- yeah, yeah. yeah, we've been to Kill Tony <laughs> together. We yeah, were. I, we were. I listened to that like on repeat. Yes. I was listening to it on the way. <laughs> yeah, we were there together. OK. OK, so four. Yeah. Now, this is my secondary. So. Yeah. So you um, said that you type like high for four. That, that's really interesting. Yeah, that was my next one after seven. OK, mm-hmm. so fours are very like um, they they really love authenticity. They really love deep connections and they have a really good, keen ability to understand human suffering. And so they really like, they can sit really well in the melancholic emotions, you know, Mm -hmm. they can see what's missing a lot. And sometimes that can be like, kind of like sad or lonely because they really value uniqueness. So they value the uniqueness, but that can also kind of make them feel like an outsider. Um, so they're oftentimes really artistic because they love like metaphor and symbolism and they love expression through mm-hmm. that. So oftentimes they're going to be some sort of artist. So it makes sense for you, especially with songwriting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're very deeply in tune with their emotions and the emotions of other people. Yeah. And I think like I've always really loved fashion and expression and uniqueness in that regard, too. So like that yeah. I can hear some of that. All right. Yeah. What's next? So type five. That's my husband, Sky. OK. Fives are... Um, you know, I'm just going to say it. Fives are like the stereotypical nerd a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. So they really value, um, value their resources in terms of like time, energy, um, and knowledge. So they're constantly just like consuming knowledge and that's very much sky. Very much. Yeah. So they will like learn everything they can about a certain subject that fascinates them. Mm-hmm. But they can also kind of like the four see themselves as an outsider, like observing the world. Yeah. And so they're, Part of their inner work is to realize they're a participant. They're not just an observer. So, um, so yeah, I'll say that about that. Okay, that's definitely not me. Yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. Nope. But interesting. Okay. Yeah. Six. Six is um, known as, I believe, the loyalist. Mm-hmm. And so six is like their inner voice is oftentimes described as a committee. So they're mm-hmm. constantly thinking through like worst case scenarios and how to avoid them. So sometimes there can be a lot of like fear and anxiety. But a lot of times the way that they deal with that is through preparation. So a prepper is oftentimes a six. Mm -hmm. But um, the way I like to describe it, I have a close uh, person in my life who's a six. And I remember telling them one time about like quitting my job and starting a company. And at first they just kept asking me questions about it. And I was like, (laughs) what the hell? Can you just be happy for me? But now that I understand the six, I realize they're just saying like, okay, I need to make sure there aren't any holes in this boat before I can be excited about this, you know, because they're making sure. Have you thought of this? Have you thought of this? Yeah. Like, yeah. So that's their way of like showing love is like making sure everything's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So very prepared, uh, tend to be very organized. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, next. Next is, is seven. seven. That's you. Mm-hmm. So sevens, I know you shouldn't have favorites, but sevens are my favorite. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> there are a lot of people's favorites. <laughs> They're known as the joyful person, the oh, fun okay. person. Really, really values like freedom and fun and happiness and seeing the bright side of things. Mm. And um, that can, uh, I mean, that makes them very fun to be around. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the struggle of the seven is to like get in touch with the more melancholic emotions, kind of like the, like the, what the four does well. Okay. Is what the seven needs to learn to do. Okay. So like, um, taking off the blinders to the bad, Mm -hmm. you know, getting in touch with, you know, the pain that you have or the anger, the fear. Um, and yeah, they very much want, um, their needs fulfilled 
-hmm. So like whether that's, oh, I want to go on this vacation, let's go do that now. Or, you know, having a certain experience, like they collect experiences and um, they really love excess too. That's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're like, I love this. I want more of this. Yes, right. Oh, that's so that Justin too, I think. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, is that anything else to add to that? Uh, there's so much to add to all okay. of these, but I think that's I good. know there is. I know. <laughs> I mean, like when I did my type, it was like, it's like 10 pages. So. Yeah. 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 So then the eight, um, they are the, um, the protectors. Mm -hmm. So eights have, um, I don't know it. So they have a lot of masculine energy, like whether they're male, female in between, they mm -hmm. have a lot of masculine energy. Um, they are, uh, they value strength. Okay. And vulnerability makes them squirmy a little bit. So part of their work is to realize that vulnerability is the ultimate form of strength. Mm -hmm. So like Brene Brown, her whole thing is vulnerability. She's an eight. So that's like an example of a really, really healthy. She eight. is. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's so, so eights interesting. Are oftentimes like strong and my favorite thing about the eight is they often portray like, mm, like Joe Rogan's an eight. Uh huh. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So v very much value strength but they really love protecting those who they see as vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So they've got this gooey center that they don't like to acknowledge, but it's very much there and it's really beautiful. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. Nine. So nines are the peacekeepers. Mm. So they um, don't like ruffling feathers. They're uh, good vibes. Yeah. They're good vibes. And so they, um, similar to the two, they tend to put other people before themselves. So um, they don't want to like say something that will ruffle feathers and stuff. And part of their inner work is to realize that their voice matters, what they do matters. And so it's really beautiful to see a nine who's like got a soapbox that they want to stand on because when they do, they, they can speak their voice then. So who would be a nine that you can think of? Um, a nine could be I'm trying to think of like celebrity nines. Yeah, maybe someone we've heard of. Yeah. You know, I don't want to guess because I could no. be wrong. I could look it up, though. Okay. Maybe we'll look it up later. Yeah, okay. let's do that. All right, yeah. cool. Well, so a lot of those resonated with me. I mean, I feel like that there's some, you know, of each of, uh, not each of those maybe, but a lot of them. No, 100%. That I relate yeah. to. Oh, okay. So that's normal. Yeah, that's normal. Okay. Yeah. How does that work? Like... You just have these other attributes, but basically you have your one thing that you're coming from. Is that yeah. nature versus or, or nurture? Is it, where do we get that? So it's a little bit of both. So like you're born as your type, like you've, mm -hmm. you've had children, you see like, oh, this baby has a personality and he's, he or she has been here for like 10 days, but they've got a yeah. personality already. You know? Yeah. So it's that. But then, um, as we grow up, our ego, like perceives and responds to certain instances in a certain way mm -hmm. so it's both nature and nurture you know it's like we are born with our type and then it's reaffirmed in these certain ways wow and is there an age by the time you know you're a certain age it's probably like is it seven usually seven is like a big age where things are figured out or is or does it continue to you know develop? I'm not sure very, I, I actually don't know that I don't work with a lot of children so yeah that's something I, I want to look into. I feel like I took an Enneagram when I was maybe in my early 30s, like 20 years ago or more. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like it turned out different. I don't feel like it was a seven. I think I was more of a two. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And um, online tests are, can lead to a lot of mistyping. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I bet. Cause it's, remember it's based on your motivation, not your behavior. Yes. And so like, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of women are mistyped as twos and a lot of men they who are. Aren't. I feel like th so many women are told they're twos. So. Yeah. Well, cause society, like, you know how I okay. said that there's a lot of masculine energy yeah. in the eight, the two has a lot of feminine energy. And that's not to say that male three or male twos are feminine, but it's what society kind of trains women to be. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of women like are, are mistyped as twos because that's how society wants us to be. They want us to be nurturing, mothering, you know, that sort of vibe. So a lot of moms, like everyone thinks their mom is a two. I remember my mom talking about it and yeah. like, and I remember when this first came up so many years ago, my friend Nack is like really into this. And so 
we've talked about it for 20 something years, but yeah, like that's where I got this two thing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you pointed that out because I bet a lot of people can relate. For sure. Yeah. My mom's a two. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Putting their needs above or your needs above theirs. That's, right. That's something every mother, every parent has to do really uh, you just some that's why we were late recording this podcast <laughs> you were doing <laughs> I was doing it up man so okay so you the let's talk about how you got your start in this and why yeah so I know you wrote it down for me but can you please relay yeah for sure yeah. so I was working in politics at the time and I've finally gotten out Thank congratulations <laughs> thank you and um in Texas or in at first in Indiana where I'm from okay and then in Texas mm -hmm. and I was working like on the side of politics that I mean when I was young it was my first job out of college I didn't really know a, enough to know ex my exact beliefs same here yeah it took me a while. Uh, for yeah. sure and so I was working for a party that I didn't agree with and that slowly revealed itself over time oh shit sorry <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so I had to essentially like go to work be one person, shut up about how I felt yeah. and thought and believed and just do my job and then go home and try and be myself. And no surprise, I was miserable. Yeah. Because kind of like what I was telling you about the three, like I could shape shift into anything. Wow. And I was being everything to everyone and not even questioning what I wanted to do. Wow. So it was a long journey. So eventually 2018, I'm like, miserable. I want to quit my job. Um, don't know what I want to do. I eventually left and started a social media marketing company that I still have, but I looked up a podcast, um, do it for the gram, highly recommend. And he was describing the three and I was like, this is creepy. But you just on. looked it up randomly. Yeah. Like you're just like, I think I'll just look this up. Yeah. And he happened to be describing a three. Um, or I, you I found, went and found the three went. Okay. Yeah, I think I had like done a, uh, an Enneagram test. Okay. Before or something okay. like that, but didn't look into it. Uh -huh. And um, so yeah, so eventually, so I was like, okay, this guy gets me. Mm -hmm. He's describing my struggles better than I even could articulate at the time. So I messaged him that day. Was like, do you do one on one coaching? Wow. Yeah. And so awesome. now he's still my mentor, and mm -hmm. he actually officiated my wedding. I he sat him. at your table. That's right. Yeah, Milton Stewart. He's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So he helped me figure out like, okay, the three is constantly trying to achieve because that's like the gold star that my ego thinks that I need to gather and collect in order to survive and thrive. But really, the inner work of the three is to get to know and love who you truly are and come from a place of authenticity to you rather than to everyone else. Mm -hmm. And the ego never told me that. Like the ego is consistently telling me, oh, you, you don't feel good about yourself right now. Go get another trophy. Because you haven't achieved, right? Uh -huh. And so there's a part of the ego, a part of all of the type structures that we call the deepest unmet longing. And it's what we want the most at the end of the day but our ego gives us these tricks and habits that paradoxically get us further from that. So the inner work is to help you achieve your deepest unmet longing instead of just listening to the ego say, like if the ego of the eight says, okay, you're feeling your feelings. You need to deny them and you need to not show any vulnerability. You know what I mean? And Present as strong. Yeah. yeah. And for the seven, it's you need to look on the bright side. Mm -hmm. You need to rationalize this and put a sunny spin on it instead of addressing the pain that you feel. Wow. So it's, it's a counterintuitive thing. And that's why I love the Enneagram because it helps invite in what your ego doesn't want you to know. <laughs> what are the other ones? Um, for the one it's to, um, you know, embrace like peace and messiness maybe and messiness yeah yeah like letting go releasing yourself from that inner voice telling you things must make be sense makes sense for mm -hmm. the two it's acknowledging that it self-care isn't selfish oh yeah mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. bury it for the four it's um embracing the positive uh -huh. so like we were talking about it's the flip of the seven yeah, yeah like three and nine are kind of two sides of the same coin four and seven are two kind of yeah. Uh, two and eight, kind of two yeah. sides, same coin. Makes sense. And then um, for the six, it's, or sorry, for the five, five. it's um, embracing that you 
are a participant in life, not just an observer. Mm -hmm. And you can rely on other people. What's the ego telling them they're about their deepest unmet need? Their deepest unmet longing is to... Um, deepest unmet longing. Yeah. Their deepest unmet longing is to um, to feel like secure in what they have. Well, I'm sorry. I want to use the exact wording. But it's essentially to be able to like trust and rely on the world and other people and not just like hoarding resources for yourself and like isolating. Yeah. Yeah, that's a control. That sounds like a control thing too. Like I must know it for myself. Yeah, yeah. And fives protect their energy a lot. Mm -hmm. So like, if they're feeling down, mm -hmm. they're gonna hole up, and that makes the ego feel good. But it it reinforces the idea that they're kind of on their own. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and not uh, integrated and participant. Yeah, like you said. Mm -hmm. Okay. And six. I six is um, six is kind of similar to the five. Six is to be able to trust themselves because sixes oftentimes get their like authority or their rules that they follow from outside of themselves whether that's like laws or uh wow you know like uh, uh, authority figures yeah sixes really respect authority um so being able to rely on their own inner authority and to embrace risk mm -hmm. instead of just avoiding it yeah are you ready to up-level your pleasure practice? I have in mind, and the main things that have helped me are the tools that I've found from Wands. Wands creates luxurious products that encourage us all to honor our body, celebrate our sexuality, and live in pleasure with more pleasure all the time. One of my favorites, if you listen to this show, then you probably already know, is the cervix wand. Wands has trademarked their number one best-selling glass pleasure wand. It's for vaginal and anal de-armoring, and it's designed for cervical and G-spot stimulation. And let me tell you, it's incredible. It's helped thousands of women become more connected to their bodies and their pleasure, and supports them to heal pelvic pain through self-yoni massage, and helps awaken more pleasure. Just recently, I've ordered the Venus Wand, another trademarked wand from Wands, and it's designed to activate and awaken the G-spot and more. Also, don't miss one of their new offerings, which are free bleed blankets that can be used as waterproof intimacy blankets. They have a beautiful selection now available. But take a look around at wands.com, that's W-A-A-N-D-S, because they have a huge selection of incredible items like yoni eggs, crystal pleasure wands in amethyst, black obsidian, anything that your heart desires, and so much more. Check them out at wands.com. That's W-A-A-N-D-S dot com. And use my link in the show notes to get 10% off or simply enter my code Amy Edwards at checkout. Again, that's W-A-A-N-D-S wands.com. Y'all, I have started using higher dose products and I am such a fan. You know, I don't put anything on this podcast that I am not 100% completely behind. And I have a special discount code for you for all higher dose products. I'm so excited. If you don't know, Higher Dose is a wellness company. They have wellness tech products, they have tools, they have supplements, and they have body care. They have so many things that are hot right now, too, that are really biohacking and up-leveling our lives at home, which is really cool. They have an infrared sauna blanket. They have an infrared PEMF mat that I'm so excited to be sharing about soon. One of my favorites, though, is the Red Light Face Mask. It stimulates collagen, it activates glowing skin, reduces fine lines, regenerates cells, and it's soft. It's not like one of the hard plastic ones. So you can kind of move it around on your body, which I've been doing. And I am seeing amazing results. I am absolutely addicted to it. I use it every single night. And I'm using it in conjunction with one of their other products, the Glow Serum. And I'm very picky about what I put on my skin. And I am loving the Glow Serum. It's specially formulated to plump and hydrate and stimulate radiant skin, which that's the goal. They have a ton of other products too, magnesium ingestibles, magnesium body care, which has a healing oil and a serotonin soap that you can use in your bath, which I've been using too. It boosts your mood, enhances your skin and deepens your detox, gets you calmed down. Anyway, I'm a fan. So I'm so excited to offer you 15% off using my code MAGIC15. Go to the show notes. You can click through on the link right there. Or if you go to Higher Dose, just enter the code MAGIC15 and you'll get 15% off. 
Higher Dose has been featured in Goop, Glamour, Elle, Vogue, Bizarre, Allure, basically you name it. And there's a reason why. So go check it out. It's at higherdose.com and enter my code MAGIC15 for 15% off. Okay, so back to you. So you you delved into it right then? Yeah. You listened to his podcast, and he must have had his podcast for a while. Yeah, it's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah, and the Enneagram community, it, I think it's my favorite. Enneagram and Coffee by Sarah Jane Case is also really good. That's okay. a huge one. I actually met her at the uh, International Enneagram Conference last week. I was about to say, week. are you about to say that there wasn't any? Last week, you just went yep. to the Enneagram Conference. It was so fun. What went on at the Enneagram Conference? A lot of presentations. <laughs> I was actually a presenter there. Ah, it was congratulations. so fun. Thank you. Achievement unlocked. Good yes. job, Dre. <laughs> felt good I love it yeah but uh not that you needed it uh so what went on like how was it what did you present I presented about um heart types so that's the two three and four. Oh yes right I saw that on my thing there's like we might as well cover that sure. since you're mentioning it there's uh the the three different types right yeah so go ahead you can talk about them I'm yeah just, I was just, there's body heart and head yes okay so with the Enneagram there's like the framework of the Enneagram, there are three centers of intelligence that we all have. Okay. The head, the heart, and the gut. Okay. And just as a side note, whether you're making a big decision or really like multiple times throughout the day, mm -hmm. I highly encourage you to check in with those three centers of intelligence because they're all telling us things all the time, but we usually are like really only listening to one or maybe two of them. Yeah. So like some people just feel so much, but don't think things through. Mm -hmm. Some people really like trust their gut instinct, but are disconnected from their feelings, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah. So, um, so there are head types, heart types and body types where they lead with that center of intelligence. Mm -hmm. So twos, threes and fours are heart types tend to lead with their emotions. Five, six and sevens are head types. So they lead with, you know, their brain, their logic, like from here up. Yeah. <laughs> Neck up. Okay. And then, Eights, nines, and ones are body types. So like more in touch with their like gut and their just like bodily like impulses, I guess you could say. That's interesting. Yeah. And one other thing I'll mention about that is um, there's kind of like a primary emotion that each of those, uh, we call them the triads, okay. um, deal with. Yeah. So heart types, two, three, and four, tend to deal with shame and guilt. So oh. we'll feel something, but it first comes up as shame and guilt. Uh -huh. And then uh, head types, five, six, and seven, deal with fear. So fives, it's like fear of losing resources. Six is fear of what could happen, worst case scenario. Seven is fear of loss of freedom. Okay. And then uh, the body types deal with anger. Yeah. So. Um, really? Yeah. Anger. Yeah. And they all deal with it differently. So eights deal with anger by like you know, expressing it like it's very readily available to them. Mm -hmm. uh, nines deal with anger by pushing against it and just like numbing out. Yeah. And ones deal with anger by just like holding it in. <laughs> like ones oftentimes, it's crazy. Ones oftentimes have jaw problems. Wow. Because they're just biting their tongue literally and metaphorically. Wow. Oh, yeah. it seemed, I have that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, you have ones that you relate to, right? Because my, I'm looking at a chart right here where seven is pointing at one. And, yeah, um, so, the arrows. Yeah, the arrows. So they all kind of like, they have wings and arrows. Yeah. So the wings are the ones that are next to you, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And those are what you're supposed to stretch toward? No, so um, your wings are the numbers on either side of you. Okay. You have two wings, but one of them tends to be stronger. Okay. So... For example, I as a three have a two wing and a four wing. Mm -hmm. And so it just, it doesn't change your motivation. It doesn't change your type. It just kind of influences you. Okay. So my two wing is stronger than my four wing. So it kind of just influences the way I behave a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I kind of lean into the two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yours are all heart. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so one of mine, eight is in body. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I, I don't know. It says make conscious stretches toward my wings too. But then the arrows, uh, are those all different or are they like if you're, if seven, your arrows go certain ways or do they all differ? Yeah, no, each type has a stress arrow and okay. a growth arrow. Okay. 
So um, for the seven, the growth arrow is five. Mm -hmm. The stress arrow is one. What does that mean? So for you, so when you're like in good health, when you're doing good stuff, when you're committed to the inner work, when things are going well, Uh you will resemble like the high level or like the healthy seven. But you will also like kind of pull from the positive traits of the five. So for the seven, you know, sevens can be like scattered or, you know, like um, not surface level in terms of like being an authentic, but like a jack of all trades. Mm. You know what I mean? kind of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I really relate to that too. (laughs) But the five is like the opposite. The five goes deep on a subject. A five is focused on like gathering knowledge about one thing. Mm -hmm. So when you're in good health, you will pull from the good aspects of the five. Okay. So that's like a good thing for people to understand if they want to grow. It's comforting. Okay. But then what about this pointing to the one? Because my jaw is like tense right now as we talk. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And I have perfectionist tendencies. For sure. Mm -hmm. So in stress, that can be prolonged stress. That can be something happens. Um, It can be like a long-term or short-term thing. Mm -hmm. Um, We disintegrate to our stress number. Uh, And so there's two ways we can do that. We can disintegrate unconsciously. And this might sound complicated, but it is pretty simple. So stick with me. (laughs) Okay. We can disintegrate unconsciously where it's like, you know what? I am thrown in the towel. Ego, you take the wheel. I'm I'm done. (laughs) And so the seven goes to the stress arrow of the one and becomes perfectionistic, judgmental, impatient. Or we can, you know, disintegrate consciously, which means kind of being more mature about it and being more intentional about it. So saying, all right, I know I'm stressed right now. Maybe I'm on my period. Maybe something happened. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm overwhelmed. And I know I'm going to go to the one. So yeah. I'm going to pull from the good aspects of the one, the healthy aspects of the one, and um, do that instead of just like ceding control to the ego. Oh, so let's just take a one for example. What would that, that would be? Uh, see what would that what would I be drawing from like yeah what would the good aspects be so um like decisiveness oh okay um actually can I pull this up yeah you you can pull it up I don't mind I mean I'm demanding a lot of you you have to remember I'm making you remember all this stuff like that's (laughs) That's, a lot that's what the training's (laughs) for girl it's cool that's right that's right it is so much information it is a lot I mean I mean just looking at this was kind of overwhelming so that's why I wanted to do this episode just to like kind of give a really easy understanding to it you know that people could really feel like okay now I at least get it yeah Yeah. and I'm still learning about every type of you know I'm I'm still learning constantly and that that's what's fun about the Enneagram is it's like a lifelong relationship with learning about yourself you know and it's not like you get to the highest levels of your number like the highest levels of health and then you're done. <laughs> right? No. That's <laughs> not that how life nice? works. Uh, yes, it would. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what in me uh, loves that, but something like loves that idea. And that's just not how it works. Unfortunately. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I'm sure that you still learned a ton at the conference, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. What was one of the coolest things you learned at the conference? Um. I really enjoyed, like most of what I've learned about the Enneagram has been, you know, on Zoom, in books, Mm -hmm. Zoom courses. And so being there in person with other Enneagram nerds was fun. And so (laughs) I bet, yeah, there were a lot of breakout sessions like the Enneagram and sex, the Enneagram and performance, the Enneagram and trauma, you know, like just all the different applications. Like there's a Enneagram prison project. Really? That, yeah, that the governor of California has even endorsed and maybe given funded to. I, I don't know exactly, but um, getting the Enneagram wow. in prisons, in schools, with children, with relationships. Um, uh, one, what it helped me do was quit my job and start to like myself again. I guess a lot of people use it in the workplace. Mm-hmm. So, it's great for teamwork. Yeah. Uh, did you take a class? Did you take one of the things on it in sex? Um, I went to some of it. Yeah. It was really interesting to see like, um, how each type has kind of like the love languages, you know, like Uh it's, it's, we all get our, um, 
affirmations and get comfortable in different ways. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like learning how to work with your own type in the bedroom. Yeah. And then, ooh, that would be a good podcast. Oh, for I sure. To tell Milton yeah. about that. <laughs> All right. So um, let's see. Where were we? What did you look up? You were looking something Yeah. So we I thought that I had about... it right here, but I don't. That's okay. But we were talking about um, like ways for you to disintegrate consciously. Disintegrate consciously. So like right. deal with your stress better. Okay. Um, so sevens can be, you know, kind of scattered sometimes. Yeah. And so when we're stressed, we all get scattered. Mm -hmm. And so this, you know, disintegrating consciously can incorporate the like black and whiteness of the one, the uh, moral uh, obligation, oh. you know? Okay. So you just feel a little less gray area and a little more like, all right, I got this sorted out. Yeah. Like putting things in it. So I can relate to that because when I feel stressed and scattered, I have to basically like clean out drawers and mm. clean out, you know, my closet and like get things in their place. Yeah. And channel my inner perfectionist or something like that. Just get uh -huh. things put away. That's probably relates, right? Yeah. 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 I see that as really. Oh, uh, that's, and that, that's, and I realize that I do it for a reason and it gives me a sense of order when I feel overwhelmed, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So, um, so as you were discovering this about yourself, how did stand up come into that? That you mentioned that that was part of like finding your voice and then you've started a podcast around it too. And I'm just really curious how how those relate. Yeah. Yeah, they don't seem like they would, right? <laughs> I guess it's a good exploring of your other side because no one's I mean, most of the time they're not giving you an achievement award for stand-up comedy, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. it's very much, you have to draw upon yourself and like really like, um, just lean into like your own knowing rather than like, did they applaud? Did they laugh? Did they like it? You know, yeah. like <laughs> there's no uh, definite gauge. 100%. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, I had been a comedy fan for years and um, so some of the struggles of the three or like part of the inner work of the three, like it's all what stand up comedy requires. Yeah. So threes can struggle with authenticity, you know, like either projecting success or, um, lying to themselves about who they are, or what they want. And, oh, damn. um, so yeah. authenticity, like I would never just dis have described myself as fake at all. And I no, still, I would no. yeah, you know uh -uh. me, but like if I, was in a group of people who like I was afraid might not like me for who I am before working with the Enneagram, I might've, you know, changed a little bit. Like mm -hmm. birthday parties used to be so stressful. Cause I would have like in high school, you have your athlete friends. I was on mock trial. So I've got like my nerd <laughs> friends. I've got, uh, I guess back then I had church friends. And so like with the softball friends, I would curse mm -hmm. and I would like kind of dumb it down with guys. I would dumb it down because uh -huh. I thought they would think that's more attractive, but not with my mock trial friends there. I used every big word I knew. <laughs> so at the birthday party, do I cuss or not? Do mm -hmm. I, am I dumb or smart? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, authenticity. Um, and in stand up, you have to be authentic. Otherwise the crowd sees right through it. And then, uh, we struggle with, you know, intrinsic confidence and, uh, getting accolades from other people rather than ourselves and stand up like people 30 years into it have bad sets, mm -hmm. but they got to pick themselves up and be okay with it. And Absolutely. so, and threes d tend to not do things unless they know they're going to be good at it. And nobody's good when they start stand up comedy. <laughs> nobody's good when they start anything. Exactly. I mean, come on, right? Yeah. But no, nobody's good when they start stand up. No. And like, I'm like slowly getting better. And that's what the podcast is about. Like, interviewing my comic friends about like, all right, how do I get better? And so sometimes we apply the Enneagram, like, okay, how do, how does a three deal with bombing a set versus a seven? You're know, like a seven is probably gonna be like, ah, it was fine. Like the, it was a bad crowd or like, oh, I'll get them next time. And so that can be good or bad. I'd turn into a total four. Yeah. I would have a full meltdown breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. <laughs> and for threes, like if I bomb a set, I'm like, I don't want to fucking do that again. Like, right, <laughs> right. So you're putting yeah. it in terms of like success or failure. Exactly. Or, where I would just be depressed. 
Oh yeah. So, and I, I, I get that for sure. Like if I have a terrible open mic, which like none of them are killer, but I'm getting better. Um, how many have you done? Um, probably like, like between 20 and 40 at this point. I am so impressed. Thanks. I am so so impressed. It's, it's a good time. Oh God, (laughs) that sounds like agony to me. I mean, but, but I am like the type that always has, like, I, I like to be prepared or else I'm just like a nervous wreck. Yeah. I don't know what that, I don't know what that is in my type, but, um, um, maybe, maybe back to ego, like, um, is just understanding where it's at once we once we even have a curiosity about it does that is that where the growth starts in this yeah so um if somebody like just learned about the enneagram and Mm -hmm. wants to use it for growth i would recommend starting with first of all finding your type and finding your correct type can we put like a in the in the show notes like a link to a good test yeah for sure and maybe on your website there is one yeah yeah there's i think that's the one i did yeah okay okay yeah, and honestly, um, I would encourage a typing interview instead of an online test. Okay. Because with a typing interview with a coach, like we're trained to not only listen to what you're saying, but how you're saying it and how uncomfortable certain <laughs> questions make you, how much enthusiasm you have in your answer, you know? <laughs> um, so like nonverbal cues and stuff. And that can just be hard to detect with those nuances in an online test. So I do typing interviews. Cool. Um, but the test can be helpful too, but just be aware that that's not like the end all be all. It's just a helpful tool to figure it out. I'm sure there's people that you've encountered that are like, oh, I'm a blank. And you know, you're like, huh. no, yeah, I'm like, like you're a nine or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You gotta find those clues. So figure out your type. Then I would suggest reading about your type. Um, the Enneagram Institute is a great website resource for that. My, my website has a lot of information on it about each type. What's your website? Uh, randomactsofcaroline.com. Okay. Great. And um, so then learn about your type. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will warn you that sometimes when you learn about your type, first you're going to be like, oh, shit, this is me. How yeah. do I know? This is so cool. And then you learn about like the unhealthy aspects and then it feels real uncomfortable. So just know that that's shining the light on the ego. The ego wants to work in the shadows. Mm-hmm. It doesn't want you to know these things. So that discomfort is the ego protecting itself. But I encourage you to stick with it because that is really helpful information because the ego knows that awareness is the first step to breaking a bad habit. And the ego is like, don't break my bad habits. Right. (laughs) I'm comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I'm protecting you. I'm Mm -hmm. helping you survive. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But in, in 2023, like we're not cavemen just trying to survive. Like we have all the resources and wisdom at our disposal to live happier, healthier, more fulfilled lives. Oh, so. totally, totally. Well, so that answers the question. Then just getting curious about it and shining a light on it is, first you have to know what it is, but yeah. then it really like is that catalyst toward growth. Mm-hmm. What's changed in you? I mean, besides embracing stand-up comedy, which is <laughs> wild. Dude, so much. Um, I mm. Do you feel like it helped your relationship or helped you a open up? A thousand percent. Why? Because, um, <clears throat> well, number one is I would, un- I understand myself better mm-hmm. and I understand him better. And so like, for example, fives, their primary defense mechanism is isolation. And mine is identification where it's like adopting attributes from other people. Right. So like, like uh, having a role model, but becoming the role model to yeah. the point where you don't even know where they stop and you uh-huh. <laughs> But so like if we were in an argument, I would rather just hash it out there. I am focused on efficiency. Mm. So I'd be like, let's get through this quickly. And I'm okay with like a little bit of yelling, no disrespect, but I'm okay with just hashing it out, you know? Right. And with Sky, with fives, they don't feel their emotions in real time. They have to go away and unpack that box because they just don't feel it in real time. Mm-hmm. And so I remember there was a, a fight really earlier in our relationship where he left the room and I was devastated. And if you don't come back to the table later, then that's stonewalling, that's not good. But now I realize, oh, he's just fiving right now. Like 
for him to, he's vibing yeah like for us to have a productive conversation he needs some space mm-hmm. and so like i know that i can give him his space and then we come back to the table but i also know that i need to hold him accountable to come back to the table because fives can just avoid their emotions for days hours weeks months years if oh, they yeah. want to yeah so that accountability there and then sky helping me with like like it, it used to frustrate the hell out of me because i'd be like okay what's the attire for the night mm-hmm. and he'd be like dress for the night you want <laughs> I'm like, that is not a helpful assignment you mean I'm i have to know what i want fit in. <laughs> yeah i'm like am i wearing heels and a dress mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. chucks and ripped mm-hmm. jeans you right. know what i mean right because i'm like i want to impress these people Mm -hmm. I need to know the assignment. Yeah. So he always points me back to my authentic North Star, which used to just piss me off because my ego is like, no, you tell me what to do. Yeah. (laughs) I'll be that. I'll be whatever you want me to be, (laughs) whether it's my partner or my boss. I'll be that because that gets me the gold star. Yeah. So he points me back to my North Star. That gets me what I think I want, which is actually your deepest unmet longing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just pretty much look at people now and understand how better to communicate with them 100 percent, yeah like um and I also am able to kind of empower them in ways because it's all about like doing your own inner work like somebody can't do it for you but you can create space for somebody to do that so if I can tell somebody has nine energy they are less likely to speak up for themselves and so I, as a three, I can be very overpowering to nines Mm -hmm. and like steamroll them by accident. And they might have something to say that they aren't going to interject. So I can create space and be like, hey, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, really. I really would like to hear it. Yeah. You know, so creating space for other people too. Yeah. I'm reading this book, Nonviolent Communication. Have you read it? No. But it is... It's, it's about how to effectively communicate and give people that space. And it seems like this would go really well with Enneagram and just seeing how people express themselves and then, and then how we express ourselves too, which is yeah. real. it's really a trip because uh, so many times we're not expressing our needs mm-hmm. in ways that are really communicating our needs. Rather, we're not even in touch with them. We're, yep. Instead, we're just like, you don't understand me. But that's not saying like, I need to be heard, mm-hmm. like the nine might say. Yeah, you know? and two struggle with that too. I think we all do in certain ways, right? Like yeah. being heard authentically. Mm-hmm. and But deeper than that, getting in touch with like what even that is. Yeah, that's, you know? that's the hardest part, I think. I think so. I think it's hard for any of them. I mean, like look at eights or whatever. Like it's um, this deeper uh, realness of who you are, mm-hmm. you know? And that's like such a, a challenge to get in touch with yeah so that's why I love my relationship coaching program because I kind of treat it like a like a fun sort of like like a date night sort of thing yeah you know, well like it can be right like very yeah yeah because yeah, there's like assignments between but they're assignments like conversations to have that aren't like we, we keep it very like sunny and stuff because uh-huh. I'm, I'm I'm honestly not trained to do like therapy sure but I do coaching mm-hmm. and um so it, it's it's fun to learn about each other and honestly communication is like all that we have really like <laughs> agreed yeah yeah so it really I mean, improves communication it really does that's that's what I'm hearing too in this is that like when it comes down to it we're we are getting more in touch with ourselves and our own growth and it provides us a a just great like foundation to communicate with other people yeah and understand them better mm-hmm. and give them more grace really yeah forgiveness right? is like the Enneagram, I think empathy, I think there was actually a like worldwide study done, like a, a survey. And the thing that people said they got from the Enneagram the most across the board was empathy. And um, it makes sense because we need empathy in the workplace. We need empathy in relationships on the highway. Like we need more empathy in the world. And yeah. the Enneagram really helps with that. I've just been reading about empathy and I was kind of looking up and studying the difference between empathy and sympathy and trying to understand that difference. And, uh, and it's really like really living the experience with someone. And they just talked about one of the things I was just reading about it like today. And, um, in the books I'm reading, one of which is the nonviolent communication, but it was just about, um, presence. And Mm -hmm. they were just saying how much of it is about just really being present 
yeah and not coming from like old stories and stuff mm -hmm. which that seems like an ego thing like when we're like drawing from old stories or future stories 100 percent. that's what like multiple times a day i check in with my head heart and gut because like i'm um or my body gut whatever yeah you say. sure because i'm very out of touch with my body hmm. and um like whether it's before I go on stage, I'll just like get so nervous that I just get in my head and I'm completely out of touch with my body. Well, so what does that look like for you? If you want to get in touch, if someone wants to be like, okay, I want to get in touch with my head, heart and body. What is, what would that be? Yeah. So I like the, I know let's position. get in our position here. Yeah. All right. So what would that be? So like, what, what do you do? I like to literally just ask it questions. Okay. So I do that in my head, but doing it in a journal or if you're in the car, doing it out loud can mm -hmm. be helpful. So I tend to check in with my head first because I, because I just do. Okay. So the head is like the facts, the figures, the logic, um, like be kind of how we were talking about shame and guilt before. Uh -huh. I feel guilt almost all the time. And so I'll check in, like, do I actually have something to feel guilty about? Oh, I do that sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. think through the facts. Um, That's really why I can't smoke weed I mean like oh really I would just constantly feel guilty if I did and mm -hmm. I was like I literally if I knew I was gonna have any cannabis <laughs> sorry to interrupt with this no like, no I total love it. sidebar but if I knew I was gonna have any cannabis I would have to basically like before I did anything be like you have nothing you are a good mom mm -hmm. you have nothing to feel guilty about everything is okay like <laughs> Yeah, I have to have a full dude. talk with myself. Yeah. That can be rough. So yeah, yeah. checking in with your head, like, is this yeah. real? Is this not? real? Like, okay, <laughs> good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of just like a made up thing to mm -hmm. just like, we want you to feel bad. I don't know why. Yeah. Because like your, your head is giving you like, again, these three centers of intelligence are constantly giving you information. But if we're only using one or two of them, that's like using one arm when you have two perfectly good arms to you. <laughs> so like, yeah. why would you stunt yourself that way? Okay. So checking in with the facts and figures, um, then check in with your heart. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard of the feelings wheel? Or the wheel oh, yeah. Motion? Big fan. So good. Because um, we oftentimes, like, if we feel angry, then if we use the feelings wheel to get more specific, then we realize, oh, we're not angry. We feel rejected. So getting specific about how you actually feel right now. And it can be multiple emotions. I'm oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, so getting in touch with your heart, how you're feeling. And some people can articulate that really well. Some people have to really kind of dig and be like, well, shit, how do I feel? About it's this? very hard. The, that book I was talking about, just to bring it up again, yeah. the NBC, Nonviolent Communication, it has a whole list of like the words that are on the feelings wheel or whatever. And I mean... It's funny, like you'll say, I feel neglected. Well, that's not a feeling. Neglected is not. That's actually putting it on somebody else. So how do you really feel? You feel lonely. You feel tired. You feel whatever it is, yeah. right? Because then you can actually like diagnose and yeah. address it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're like, oh, I need company. I need, you know, like to talk to someone, you know, yeah. or whatever it is. So anyway, okay, we're going back to your check-in. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, okay, we went through the head we and did. the heart. And then with your body... Um, this is, again, this is the most difficult for me of the three, but your body is telling you stuff. So like right now we're sitting crisscross applesauce. Yes. <laughs> My shoulders are feeling good. Like I'm yeah. comfortable with you. Yeah. We're having a good time. This leg's falling asleep a little bit, which honestly I didn't realize until I checked in with my body so you like took a second yeah huh. so i'm gonna move my legs move so your legs I now i'm more comfortable so like just literally checking in like kind of doing a body scan a, a meditative scan is good um to see like okay am i are my shoulders tense and tight mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. or like am i on the edge of my seat because i am afraid and i feel like i want to run out of the room like your body is telling you that or like am i shrinking or am I like man spreading, like feeling more powerful? So getting that information to inform how you're actually feeling and what your body's telling you it wants to do. Or like, am I hungry? Am I tired? And then those work together probably to be like, okay, am I actually in a dangerous situation where I need to be tensed up? Or am I just fearful? Yeah. For like a reason that's related to my ego. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like I, um, I, this is like a three thing and a people pleasing thing and like a fawn response thing. But okay. Like, um, there, okay. There've been very few times where I've been uncomfortable at comedy clubs, mm -hmm. but the times when I am, it's because there's a dude and we're kind of alone and I'm uncomfortable, but I just straight up fawn response. 
which is, and I, I use the three ego to be like, okay, what, what do they want you to be? Be that to keep you safe. And I'll just ignore the bodily instincts that are saying, get out of this area. GTFO, right. Yeah. Right. So if I'm not paying attention to my body, that's a fucking safety concern. Oh my God, it really is. Yes. Yeah. So it's, wow. it's, it's really important to pay attention to those things. Uh, that's, that's kind of the, that what I was getting at with like the distinguishing, if you're checking in with all those things, you're able to make uh, and not run away from a situation that's not actually dangerous. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. like maybe I'm just intimidated and I want them to like me and that's why I'm tensing up. Yeah. So just relax and be yourself and it's cool. You know, so it, it can alleviate stress. It can give you information on how to make decisions and just like do a check in so that you know what's happening. And it seems like you're balancing out all three of these types that are within us all, mm-hmm. right? But um, maybe you're balancing them out in a healthy way and, you know, working with your type yeah, really well, mm-hmm. don't you think? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, knowing about like the ego structure and the three centers of intelligence, it, it helps just inform the way you view and interact with the world. Yeah. Okay, good. What have we not covered that we, we need to talk about with the Enneagram? Oh my goodness. Also, are we going to, are we covering too much? I'm just like no. loving this. No, we're not too okay, much. Good. No, okay, no. Not I know it can be like just so much to digest, but one thing um, that I do think is really important is, um, are the subtypes. Okay. So this would be like my four, for instance. No, or, so no. this is, um, these are related to your instincts. Oh, really? So yeah, there, for some reason with the Enneagram, there's a lot of like groups of three, like triads and stuff. Okay. Um, but so this is another one of those. And honestly, if you are interested in using the Enneagram for growth, like right after you learn about your type, I would try and find your subtype. I found mine. You I did. have mine. Yes. What is it? Seven. Or no, that's your type. So okay, here, I'll explain it. It says subtype seven. Is that possible? Um, <laughs> oh, okay. So you're one to one. I okay, am so one to one. Yes. Okay. One to one. Yeah. One to one. There you go. Okay. okay. So basically. I didn't read it right. Sorry. No, you're good. One to one is my dominant subtype. You're yes. like absorbing all of this very well. I'm throwing a lot at you. No, it's it's fun. I forgot it really about is. these subtypes. I remember reading this whole thing. Sorry. It's been a minute since I read all this. You're so. doing great, girl. Okay. So there's three <laughs> main subtypes. Yeah. So okay. these are based on our instincts. So within the framework of the Enneagram, we have three instincts and okay. we all have them. So there's self-preservation. Mm-hmm. So focused on the self, like kind of like bodily function sort of thing. Okay. Um, just focus on the self. Mm-hmm. There's the social instinct, which has more to do with like groups and like organizations or teams or society. Mm-hmm. And then there's the one-to-one, which is also known as the sexual instinct. And that is sometimes related to sex, but oftentimes related to like a romantic partner or just a one-on-one relationship. Okay. So... Of these three instincts, again, we have them all. One of them is the strongest. We call that the dominant one. Mm -hmm. Um, That determines your subtype. So your strongest is one-to-one. Got it. Yes. There's also, so with the dominant instinct, we kind of rely on that a lot. Like it's kind of involuntary. We just rely on it. And then there's also one that's repressed. So it doesn't kick in enough. Like we don't rely on it enough. Okay. And then one of them just kind of sits in a healthy middle. Okay. So for you, your dominant instinct is one to one. Mm -hmm. And so like a a one to one seven looks and kind of seems a little different than a social seven or a self-preservation seven. Okay. So your motivation is the same as those other sevens, but yours is more like you kind of use your type structure to like attract a partner or make your partner happy or um like it's more focused on one-to-one relationships okay okay so which one is your repressed my repressed is self-preservation okay that's my repressed too yeah that made sense it was um the instinctual drive to look for security well-being comfort and satisfaction and basic survival needs like and that's so not me food shelter warm like Avoiding danger become the primary focus of attention in different ways, depending on the type of person. That's what this says. Yeah. Yeah, no. So what's nice about knowing, like, what I just described is called your instinct stack. Uh Uh-huh. So knowing your dominant instinct allows you to understand what instinct kind of needs to be tamed a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because if you're relying on that so much, then 
you're kind of missing out on the other aspects. Here you we know? sit one on one. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And then knowing your repressed instinct is helpful, especially for us as self preservation blind. Is yeah. What you call it. Yeah. Um, cause like I, I'm sure that you're like, you'll get, you'll throw yourself into a project and forget to eat lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, yeah. So knowing that you need to develop that is almost an assignment to focus on self care because you aren't going to intrinsically just do it. Okay. But Milton, he's a self preservation seven. Mm -hmm. So he does focus on that. Um, I don't know what his blind is, but like, it's just, it's a helpful assignment to know what to tame mm -hmm. and what to develop. And then what's the one we didn't cover, the social or group focused? Yeah, so um, that's my dominant. I'm a social three. Uh huh. And so, like, if I just let my ego run amok, like, I would walk into a room, and I, I, I know this, like, when I walk into a room, I know who, I know what the hierarchy is. I know who is quote unquote important for whatever my goal is. Hmm. So if I let my ego run amok, then I'm going to be this like ladder climbing asshole. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? Uh -huh. But because I know this about myself, I know to like, I, I'm going to know the hierarchy, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to feed into it. So now I challenge myself to like at the comedy clubs, I don't go in and be like, okay, who's the most famous? Who are the bookers? Whatever. Like, I, I kind of know who the, those people are, as, mm -hmm. I mean, anybody probably would. But I talk to who I find the most interesting. Yeah. And I can be present in that and not a ego asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but here, yeah, ladder climbing asshole. Yep. That's yep. hilarious. So, okay. So that's just another way of really understanding how to get more in, in balance, basically. Yeah. With your with yourself mm -hmm. it's an identifier but it's uh, it's almost like wings where it helps identify who who you are mm -hmm. but i would challenge people to understand subtypes more than wings okay first of all you'll impress people <laughs> you'll yeah be like oh you know your wing what's your subtype <laughs> like this is i my, love it this is my soapbox thing because the, okay. the the um the instincts mm -hmm. are much better to understand for growth mm-hmm and the wings are more like fun facts to me, I think. Okay. No, that's good. That's good for people to know, like know your subtype and then you'll have more about how you operate. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's just, there's a lot to absorb here. And it's, it's weird too, because I feel like I can relate to so much you said about other things, you know? So, yeah. Um, I don't know. And don't know. One, one reason too, why we relate to a lot of other ones is like, we went over a bunch of different triads today. Yeah. But there are other ones too. Like there's the Hornevian triads. What's that? There, it's um, like Hornevian. Yeah, like <laughs> there's the assertive triad, the withdrawing triad, and shit, I forget the other one. But like three and seven are both in the assertive one. Okay. So like we assert, but like the withdrawing ones, like a uh, like a nine, for example, like and a five, they withdraw. So we all have these similarities. It's a very like dynamic tool. So that can make it confusing, but it's also just like beautifully complex. Yeah. And I like that you called it a dynamic tool. Like yeah. that's a great way to look at it. Like it can serve us mm -hmm. in, in a myriad of ways, not only understanding ourselves. All right. Well, what, what else did we not get to? We uh, didn't get to our, we, we got to that. Now we've talked about our subtype yes which mine is not seven it is that is my type yeah you're a one to one seven it felt so right there one was a big seven, seven right there so fun like rose colored glasses um yeah. like idealistic very much and like you're a big dreamer and that's He's big time yeah yeah mm -hmm. I like almost to a fault I think you know like but that's just that's I just I like being like that yeah yeah there's nothing wrong with, I mean it's it's your superpower so that's what's great is like understanding who you are and what makes you great, but also realizing like, oh, there are ways that I could be more fulfilled by yeah. dropping this bad habit, but maintaining what makes me awesome. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. What have you learned by doing stand-up comedy that has helped you personally? Mm. Um, giving less fucks about what other people think. Love it. So hard. I, I, yeah, very hard. So hard to do. Yeah. So that congratulations. Really Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still give a lot of fucks, but I give a lot less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what about like, um, 
your interactions with people? Are they more present? Are they like, would you say it's affected that? For sure. Yeah. With presence and just finding more joy. Cause I mean, there's so much in the world that can just really bum you out. And yeah. so being able to find the humor in it, mm -hmm. like, I mean, I heard a joke last night about like pedophilia and like pedophilia is <laughs> Obviously. hilarious yeah. <laughs> I mean my god but it's, it's an <laughs> awful awful thing <laughs> it should be wiped from the face of the earth but somehow this person was able to make me have an involuntary laughter response <laughs> to something so horrible yeah <laughs> isn't awesome. that insane yeah. like what <laughs> so finding joy in I mean that that's the most extreme example but yeah. I mean if if something bad happens in my life, I'm able to find humor in it rather than despair. Oh, so totally. much happier. Yeah. And, and I let things go more because it's like, oh, ha, ha, that's how they're choosing to act. That's crazy, but <laughs> it's funny. It's not frustrating anymore. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, maybe I can work that into a set. Let me put that on my notes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have an outlet for it too, which yeah. is great. Uh -huh. So yeah. All right. Well, is there anything we missed and anything you really wanted to, to talk about that we didn't get to today? You know, I think we covered a lot. Um, I encourage, I am available for um, typing interviews, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, in one-on-one -on -one coaching, we tend to start by, first of all, figuring out your type, but then we set a goal. Mm -hmm. And so whatever that goal is, we work towards it together. And um, the main goal that I've worked with for people is being able to quit their job. And I'm here to help anyone wow. do that. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. So, yeah, it's, it's been really rewarding. And also the relationship program is really fun. Um, I just, I want to spread like the wisdom of the Enneagram because I just think it would really make the world such a better place if everyone had that understanding um, yeah. So, yeah. And that tool to communicate better, like we were talking about. Yeah. When it comes down to it, it's about communication. You're better able to understand yourself, express yourself, and then hear them more clearly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's really cool. So, well, good. Well, thank you so much. Thank I'm so you. happy we did this. Uh, and I feel like I got a better understanding to it. I know we talked a lot about my own types, but I hope that people like you know, got a grasp of the bigger picture of it. So yeah. thank you so much. I mean, like it's, um, it's fascinating and it's definitely something that I've been tuned into, but not real clearly, but that's typical of a seven, isn't it? I just know <laughs> enough just to like, be like, huh, cool. You know, I just like ha have a dilettante kind of thing toward it. So, I mean, and I, I try to retain as much as I can and use it as I can. So yeah, anyway, thank that's you. All we can do. That's all we can do. Tell everybody how they can find you too. randomxofcaroline.com, I believe is the main one or on Instagram, the same handle, correct? Yeah. Yeah. My personal is random acts of Caroline and I have an Enneagram account that's like sunshine and rainbows. Yes. And lots of information about the Enneagram. So if you're interested, follow that. It's I, What's that I, one called? Enneagram with Caroline. Right. I yeah. knew that. And then my that. podcast is also Random Acts of Caroline. Good. <laughs> okay. That's all going to be in the show notes and everybody can follow you. And I want to do the talking interview. I want to make sure that this is all correct. Yeah. Do you feel like you can talk to somebody and get a pretty handle, just pretty good handle on what they are just from a conversation or does it take more? Yeah, it depends. And it's also harder to type someone who is very healthy. Um, oh. Like if you are really unhealthy, I mean, you're, you're, I guess flaws and struggles are more, you know, out there oh, yeah. on the table. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, some people it's like immediate, I already know. And some people like you got to really ask deep questions and get to the root of it. Uh -huh. but, um, but yeah, I'm getting like even faster at it and it's really fun. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. So, well, good. Well, congratulations on everything. Thank you. When, uh, do you uh, well, I know you're going to be traveling for a while, so you probably don't have stand-ups, but maybe people can follow you on Instagram and Come see your stand up sometime. Or yeah, something. for sure. Yeah, definitely follow Random Acts of Caroline for that. Awesome. Good. Well, thank you. Thank love you Sammy. so much. Love thank you. you for being here and You're everything. Such a joy. Oh, uh, you are too. Love you so much. And uh, and thank you for being here. I hope that this answered some of your questions about the Enneagram. It did mine. I mean, like I said, I've been I've been looking into it for like with my friend for at least twenty years, off and on, and and I still felt like now I have a clear 
clearer picture of it. So I hope you do too. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me or Caroline. And just thank you so much for being here for yourself. It's all about these tools that we can access to communicate more clearly, to understand ourselves more clearly and to in turn live happier and more authentically and more honestly and just feel better just feel better how about that for the <laughs> end goal so i love you so much thanks for being here if you want to catch up on the episodes the summer of sex series just finished recently those are excellent episodes too they're all on amyedwards.info you can scroll across there's tons of stuff in there and my courses if you want to catch up on those uh i love you so much thank you so much for being here and thank you to our fabulous guest caroline king um and follow me you know everywhere if you haven't signed up for the newsletter till next time this has been the amy edwards show from overcome studios remember to rate review and subscribe and thank you so much for being here sign up for our newsletter at amyedwards.com